Greetings one and all and welcome to another episode of Time Traveler the 1930s. We are getting dangerously close to the end of this series and I'm excited and sad at the same time but fear not there is more fun stuff on the way. Today we are doing somebody that I have always had a deep interest in. I've had postcards of her dressed in really beautiful haute couture men's clothing. Uh, she's an icon of glamour. She's a talented woman as well as someone who's very intelligent and politically involved. Just a hero of the masses, if you will, and someone that you may or may not know a lot about. Today's guest is the incomparable Marlena Dietrich. Marie Magdalena Dietrich was born on December 27, 1901 in Schoenberg, Germany, to Wilhelmina Elizabeth Josephine, nay Felsing, who came from a wealthy family in Berlin, and her father, Louis Eric Otto Dietrich, who was a police lieutenant. Marie had one sibling named Elizabeth who was born the previous year. Mr. Dietrich passed away in 1907, and shortly after his death, his good friend, Edward von Losch began to court Wilhelmina. After several years together, Losch and Wilhelmina were married in July of 1914. Sadly, Losch passed away in 1916 from war injuries. He never formally adopted the Dietrich girls despite speculation that he had and that he had given the girls his last name. He had not, in fact. Marie's family had nicknamed her Lena or Lena, and in a bid to create her own identity at age 11, she decided to take pieces from two of her names and created Marlena. Marlena and her sister were tutored at home in subjects that included piano, French, English, ballet, and violin. She then attended the Auguste Victoria Girls School from 1907 to 1917, and eventually graduated from the Victoria Louise School in Berlin in 1918. She enjoyed artistic pursuits, including theater and poetry throughout her teenage years. And even during her formal education, Marlena continued to take private lessons at home in language and music. At one point, her music lessons even included mandolin, but she studied violin above all other instruments and had a dream of playing as a concert violinist. Much to Marlena's dismay, she suffered a wrist injury that crushed her dream of playing in concert. But she was able to secure a job as a pit orchestra violinist for silent films at the Berlin Cinema. In another negative twist, she was fired after only a handful of weeks. The reason was unspecified. Forced to abandon a music career, Dietrich's interest in stage performance led her to seek out a place at the Max Reinhardt Acting Academy. She auditioned, but was not accepted. However, Marlena was not deterred. She continued to accept small roles for stage and broke into film acting with a tiny role in a historical comedy called The Little Napoleon in 1923. Her next film was Tragedy of Love, also in 1923. She met her future husband, Rudolf Sieber, on the set of the film and ended up marrying him in a civil ceremony in Berlin on May 17, 1923. Marlena's only child, Maria Elizabeth Sieber, was born of this union on December 13, 1924. Dietrich continued to work on stage and in film throughout the 1920s, but her true debut did not take place until 1929. It was an eventful year for Marlena as she separated from Rudolf and simultaneously caught the attention of director Joseph von Sternberg. He cast her as Lola Lola in The Blue Angel in 1930. She played a sultry and worldly leading lady in one of Germany's very first talking films. The 1930s were explosive for Dietrich's career. Von Sternberg took her to the United States and landed her a contract with Paramount Pictures. She was showered with gifts, which included a new Rolls-Royce Phantom II. She was being fashioned to overtake the success of Greta Garbo. And with von Sternberg's help, she began to shape her femme fatale persona in a series of films. Those films included Morocco, 1930, Dishonored, 1931, Shanghai Express, 1932, 
Blonde Venus 1932, The Scarlet Empress 1934, and The Devil is a Woman in 1935, in which Dietrich later said she looked her most beautiful. In the 1932 film Shanghai Express, von Sternberg pioneered lighting effects that would elevate Marlena's beauty as a rising star by using what he called butterfly lighting. This was executed by using only two lights, one focused high upon the subject and a second just below the camera. The shadow created would resemble a butterfly's wings, hence the name. It became a popular photographic lighting technique used by portraitist to the stars, George Harrell. She gave the audience a slightly lighter performance in Desire 1936 with Gary Cooper, and it was a commercial success which gave Dietrich a chance to look into different types of roles. Dietrich's artistic partnership with von Sternberg ended when he was fired by Paramount, but she had already been eyeing some impressive offers from independent producers. She attempted a final film with Paramount, this time a romantic comedy called I Loved a Soldier in 1936, but it ended up in the dustbin after the project was scrapped for multiple issues with the script and scheduling, as well as the firing of producer Ernst Lubitsch. Dietrich made The Garden of Allah, 1936, with independent producer David Selznick. She was paid $200,000 for her work in this film, but it was surpassed by her next independent film in Britain, Night Without Armor, in 1937. Producer Alexander Korda was very pleased with her work, and she received a hefty salary of $450,000, which made her one of the highest paid film stars of the era. Both of her independent pieces did well at the box office, but she was somehow beginning to decline in popularity with her public. Thus followed the ominous title of Box Office Poison. She shared the honor of this title with premier actresses such as Garbo, Hepburn, and Crawford. During Dietrich's time in London, she later recounted tales about being approached by Nazi party officials who offered her elite stardom as one of the actresses of the Third Reich back home in Germany. She refused all of their offers, including personal offers made by Hitler, and instead applied for United States citizenship in 1937. Her films were banned in Germany as a result of her refusal to work in the country. She made her way back to Paramount upon return to the United States and made Angel, 1937. It was another romantic comedy, but it was not well received by the public. Due to its failure, Paramount offered to buy out the remainder of her contract. After a brief hiatus from acting, Marlena starred opposite James Stewart in Destry Rides Again, in 1939, directed by Frank Borzich. She did not receive the money that she was accustomed to for the role of a body saloon barmaid, but it revived a waning career. She performed a song in the film, See What the Boys in the Back Room Will Have, which she ended up recording on the Decca Records label. The song became a hit and sparked interest in her for similar roles in Seven Sinners in 1940 and Spoilers in 1942, both with co-star John Wayne. Dietrich became an American citizen in 1939, renouncing her German citizenship and put a great deal of her attention on World War II. She gave up all of her earnings from Night Without Armor to help the Jewish refugees. She was also one of the first public figures to sell war bonds. She toured the United States throughout 1942 and 1943, appearing before thousands of troops as a one-woman show. She joined the USO and continued to perform for Allied troops in 1944 and 1945, all across Europe. She sang songs from her films as well as dazzling audiences with her skill on the musical saw. She also performed a mind-reading act for the audiences, which was often more comedy than clairvoyance. In 1944, the Office of Strategic Services began a musical propaganda broadcast to demoralize enemy soldiers. Dietrich was made aware of the project and happily recorded many songs for this purpose. When the war finally came to an end, Marlena reunited with her sister Elizabeth and her small family. 
They had been living in Belsen, running a movie house that was frequented by Nazi officers and officials who ran the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. Dietrich was happy to give her support by vouching for the family when prosecution of Nazi sympathizers began, which is a very caring act for a woman who, later in life, denied all knowledge of Elizabeth and her son, disowning them and claiming to have been an only child. For all of her efforts during the war, Dietrich received the Medal of Freedom in November of 1947. She said that this was her proudest accomplishment. In addition, she was also presented with the Légion d'Honneur by the French government for her dedication to entertaining the Allied troops throughout World War II. Shortly after the war, her daughter Maria gave birth to a son named John. In 1948, Marlena was dubbed the world's most glamorous grandmother. When the USO tours ended, Dietrich was unable to regain her former fame as a screen actress, but she continued to act in a long list of films, including work for directors Alfred Hitchcock, Orson Welles, whom she thought was a true genius, Mitchell Lyson, and Fritz Lang. This list of films included Golden Earrings in 1947, A Foreign Affair in 1948, Stage Fright in 1950, Witness for the Prosecution in 1957, and Touch of Evil in 1958. Her final major appearance in a feature film was in Judgment at Nuremberg in 1961, directed by Stanley Kramer. Dietrich also provided the narration for a documentary called Black Fox, the Rise and Fall of Adolf Hitler, which received an Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature in 1962. Although she had been appearing in a series of films and still recognized as a silver screen persona, she spent a large amount of her time working as a cabaret artist from the 1950s through the 1970s. She was offered an appearance at the Sahara Hotel on the Las Vegas Strip in 1953, for which she was offered $30,000 per week. She accepted and put together a short program of familiar songs and wore a rather scandalous gown for the performances. It was a heavily beaded silk gown created by Academy Award-winning Hollywood designer Jean-Louis that was nude and sheer, giving the illusion that skin was showing in provocative areas. It attracted a great deal of publicity. The Las Vegas shows were successful and her contract was renewed. In addition, she was engaged by the Café du Paris in London a few months later. She wore a form-fitting gown for the first half of the show and then changed into a top hat and tails for the second half when she would perform more traditionally male songs like I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face. To enhance her cabaret performance, Marlena hired composer and pianist Burt Bacharach as her musical arranger when she began her nightclub circuit. They revamped her one-woman show and expanded her repertoire by adding popular songs that were current in addition to songs from her films. Bacharach worked hard to showcase the notes that Dietrich had. Her range was quite limited as she claimed to be a contralto, but admittedly one with very few upper register notes. The pair recorded four full-length albums and several singles between 1957 and 1964. She often credited Bacharach in interviews with giving her direction and success when she felt lost and discouraged. Reviews of Dietrich's performances often praised her for her versatility, her ability to sing flighty, simple songs with glee, but then to deliver a heavy ballad in which she was so invested in the subject matter that she could bring onlookers to feel a wide range of emotions. As she aged, she used a handful of non-surgical techniques to maintain her figure and glamorous appearance. She used undergarments that sculpted her figure, temporary facelift tape, makeup tricks, and various wigs. The stage lighting was carefully manipulated as well. After a very long absence, Marlena returned to West Germany during a concert tour. She received negative press and several people took to the streets to protest her arrival because they had labeled her as a traitor for renouncing Hitler and Germany during the war. The chaos went so far as to include bomb threats to her sold out venues. While performing in Berlin, protesters shouted, Marlena, go home. 
but not all Germans wanted to see her go. The Berlin mayor had also been in exile during Nazi rule, and he respected Marlena deeply. East Germany also received her well. However, Dietrich was emotionally drained from her negative experience and vowed never to visit again. She was still reeling when she decided to take the show to Israel, where she was well received. There, she broke an age-old taboo by singing in German. She performed a German version of Pete Seeger's anti-war anthem, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? She later became the first German-born individual and the first woman to receive the Israeli Medallion of Valor in 1965. Dietrich recorded the show in 1964 in London at the Queen's Theater. She was lucky enough to have performed on Broadway on two occasions, winning a special Tony Award in 1968. Her show was titled An Evening with Marlena Dietrich and was later filmed in London. Although she was not happy with the final cut, she received a quarter of a million dollars for her cooperation. It aired in the United States in January of 1973. The stressful performance schedule continued into 1975, but her health had been declining for a decade. She had survived cervical cancer in 1965 and suffered poor circulation in her legs, relying more and more heavily on alcohol and painkillers. While performing at the Shady Grove Music Fair in Maryland in 1973, Dietrich fell while on stage and injured her left leg. It was a serious injury requiring skin grafts to heal. This was followed in August of 1974 by a fracture to her right leg. In September of 1975, the final injury was the nail in the coffin of her performance career. She fell from the stage during a performance in Sydney, Australia and broke her femur. She was incapacitated and became bedridden for the majority of her remaining years. To add insult to injury, her husband, Rudolf, whom she had separated from but never divorced, had also been battling cancer and died on June 24, 1976. She made one more appearance on screen in Just a Gigolo in 1979, starring David Bowie. She sang the title song for the film, which was a tale of 1920s Berlin and the decadence that was stifled by its transformation between the wars. At this point in her life, Marlena retired to her apartment on Avenue Montaigne in Paris, where she remained alone, except for the occasional visitor. She wrote letters and spoke to friends by telephone, some of whom were very famous and high up political figures, but by and large, she enjoyed her solitude. She also wrote her autobiography during this time, Nimmt nur mein Leben, Take Just My Life, which was published in 1979. In her lifetime, Marlena Dietrich set a new standard for glamour while defying conventional gender roles in society. She wore a top hat and tails in her cabaret shows. She enjoyed boxing when studios opened to women in the late 1920s, which was a typically male sport. And she positively thrived while attending drag balls and gay clubs as a bisexual woman. She embraced androgyny and fluid sexuality. She had a long history of affairs, many of which overlapped, but all of which were known about by her husband. Among her lovers was Gary Cooper during their 1930 filming of Morocco. His partner was not fond of Dietrich, nor was Greta Garbo due to her affair with John Gilbert. She spent some quality time with Joan Crawford's husband, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., as well as beginning an affair with James Stewart during the filming of Destry Rides Again. Finally, she began affairs with French writer Eric Remarc and French actor Jean Gabin. Marlena was fluent in German, French, and English, and was known for worldly mystique, which made her irresistible. Between ages 50 and 70, she had relationships with several leading men, some of which lasted decades, including Ewell Brenner, Errol Flynn, George Bernard Shaw, John F. Kennedy, John Wayne, Frank Sinatra, and Kirk Douglas. And the list goes on and on. <laughs> In addition to many male co-stars that she enjoyed affairs with, Marlena entertained a group of close friends affectionately named Marlena's Sewing Circle. 
who were a tight-knit group of bisexual women and lesbians who were thriving in relationships with starlets underground. Dietrich's closest friend was singer Edith Piaf. She was the matron of honor in her wedding, but it was speculated that even she was part of Marlena's women's circle. Dietrich wasn't the only one enjoying infidelities. Her husband also entertained lovers, one of whom she allowed to stay in their home in Europe and in the United States. It was an open marriage that both partners enjoyed equally. Marlena had been raised in the Lutheran church with Christian values, but renounced her belief in God after World War I. She was quoted as saying, if God created this world, he should review his plan. Dietrich's amazing career and life ended on May 6, 1992 due to kidney failure. She was 90 years old. Approximately 1,500 mourners came to her funeral at the Roman Catholic Church of La Madeleine in Paris on May 14, 1992. Heads of state and political leaders from all over the world were present, many of whom she had kept in contact with by telephone. Her coffin was draped with the French flag and a small bouquet of roses and wildflowers was at the foot of the altar sent by French President François Mitterrand. Her medals of honor were all displayed at the foot of her coffin. She was honored and buried like a soldier. Dietrich had expressed a wish to be buried in her birthplace of Berlin, so her body was flown back to her home. The coffin was draped in the United States flag to symbolize her American citizenship as her visitors tossed flowers upon her coffin. Marlena loved flowers, collecting them after each performance. It was a beautiful send-off for a woman who meant so much to the world as an entertainer, yes, but also a humanitarian. She was interred in a grave near her mother's in Schoenberg. Her legacy and influence, well, it's broad and it reaches into the present day as we contemplate what a woman should be. She was all things in one, a glamour goddess, a champion for the downtrodden, a pioneer in gender fluidity, and a warrior to break down norms in gender and in political affiliation. She went where her heart led her. And how can you say anything negative about that? Berlin granted her honorary citizenship in May of 2002 and erected a plaque at the place of her birth. Okay, <laughs> so that is the story of Marlena Dietrich. An amazing woman and very worthy to be researched and learned about and her efforts were amazing. Not perfect, still human. She made mistakes, but she did her best to forge a way in this world, and I respect her for that. Definitely follow all the links below. Um, so many um, clips of this marvelous woman's work that you should check out, especially if you've not heard about her or not seen any of her work. Um, I tend to think of her as being super famous, uh, but I understand that there are younger viewers who may not know anything about Ms. Dietrich, check her out check out her film clips i've got some trailers definitely have a trailer uh, for the david bowie film just a gigolo down there really interesting stuff you get to see the huge span of her career from the 20s all the way through the 70s and uh it's just it's amazing it's amazing to see the breadth of her work so i hope you enjoy that part i'll try to include some of her singing as well because that was a huge part of her life um gosh Ask questions. Let me know what you think. Let, tell me what you think about the series, what you thought about Marlena Dietrich's story. Even though a lot of these people are actors and performers, um, I feel like they all have a really interesting backstory as far as where they came from and what they decided to do once they got a platform in the world. And I find that fascinating because they're not just performers. They, they're human beings with emotions and a stance on things with beliefs. And I love sharing all of their different viewpoints Thank you as always for joining me on this journey. And in these very, very long and verbose videos, I try to keep like very little of my own personal opinion in here. Um, lots of stuff I would have loved to interject <laughs> in her story about my own opinions, but, uh, but I'll keep that to myself. Um, obviously I've covered her so you know that I like her. 
Um, that's not always the case. I don't always love all of my subjects, but I do have a special place for Marlena. Um, again, check out the links, let me know what you think, and hopefully you'll join me. We have two more guests left in this series, and it's coming fast. I'm gonna try to keep a fever pitch on the production of these videos so that we don't lag behind again like we did over the holidays. I'm gonna be traveling a lot more um, with my younger child who's gonna be doing um, elite dance competition. <laughs> so if you can imagine, no, I am not a dance mom. I am only the mom of a dancer. I don't argue with people, I just support my kid. But I will be gone for many weekends between now and April. Um, so I'm gonna try to crank these out during the weekdays so I can still post on the weekends. And I hope you enjoy these next few episodes. Please tell me below if you made it this far, do you want to see a Time Traveler 1940s? It would be the final series um, in this group of episodes, the 20s, 30s, and 40s. I've already got guests in mind. Um, if you're interested and you would watch maybe another 10 guests from the 1940s after this series is over, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys, especially my hardcore fans that are here for every episode. You'll never know how much you guys mean to me. Thank you for your time. Thank you for writing beautiful comments and supporting me. Uh, I'm, this is my, gosh, my channel's two years old. I can't believe it. Um, and I would really love to grow this year. I would really love to branch out and find even more, you know, devout followers <laughs> to come join us on our vintage journey and maybe get to 350 subs. My dream is to get to 400 and then we'll see how I feel. But if you know anybody who's into history, who's into biography, who's into storytelling and Sims building and create a Sim, any of the above, send them my way because I would really love to grow the channel this year. I, I was kind of stuck in 2021 right around the 300 mark and we finally broke the ceiling. So I'd like to get as far as we can and just spread the word about people that we shouldn't forget and times and places that are not spoken about anymore. I feel really passionately about bringing the past into our present and learning from it and being inspired by it. I'm done rambling. I hope you enjoy this last little snippet of the video and the, the very brief walkthrough. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you for being here for all of these episodes. I hope you have the best weekend ever. I will be traveling, so I probably won't, <laughs> but I hope you enjoy this episode at least as part of your weekend. And until next time, my friends, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy, and that you have a beautiful day.